today we're going to be talking about properties of logarithms. And these properties are going to help us when we get to solving some more challenging logarithm equations. Okay, so the product property. Keep in mind that remember, logarithms are exponentials. So when you were multiplying exponentials together, what did you do when you had the same base? You would add the two exponents. When we were dividing, you would subtract the exponents. And then this is kind of like a power to a power. You can bring down the power of your exponential down in front to make your life a little bit easier. Okay, express as a single logarithm and simplify. So this is using those properties to get us some values of our logarithm. Because I don't know what power, 6 to what power gets me 4 and 6 to what power gets me 9. But we have when under addition, I can combine those in one logarithm and multiply the 4 times the 9 to get 36. Now we're going to be able to evaluate that. 6 to what power gets me 36? Well, that is going to be the second power. So notice how now when I combine my logarithms into one logarithm, I'm able to find the value. Okay, so the second one. Under subtraction, we can combine those into one logarithm where I have 192 over 3. Now 192 divided by 3 is 64. Okay, 4 to what power gets me 64? That's 3. Whereas I wasn't able, again, to evaluate either one of those individually. Now express as a product, simplify if possible. So when looking at this problem, I wouldn't give you guys a calculator. And even me as a math teacher, I don't want to have to do 32 to the 6th power. That's going to be a crazy number. But if I bring down the 6 in front of the logarithm, because I have a power, I can make that now 6 times the log base 2 of 32. Now log base 2 of 32, 32, or 2 to what power gets me 32? That's the 5th power, so now I can simplify that to 30. Same thing. I don't want to do 4 to the 20th, but if I bring down the 4, I bring down, I apologize, the 20th, now I just need to evaluate log base 8 of 4. Now log base 8 of 4 is a little bit challenging. So 8, 8 to what power gets me 4? Okay. What we have to do is we now have to write these both as the same base. The easiest base is to convert 8 to 2 to the 3rd and convert 4 to 2 squared. So I end up with 3x equals 2 with the base is the same. I can set the exponents equal and I get x to the 2 thirds. x is 2 thirds. So log base 8 of 4 is 2 thirds. Now I can just go ahead and multiply across and get now this as my answer. Okay, inverse properties of logarithms and exponentials. Remember, logarithms and exponentials are inverses of each other. So when I have a log base b of b to some power x, they undo each other. The logarithm base b and the exponential of b to the x undoes each other and undo each other and you get x as your output. Same thing here when you have a logarithm in your exponent b to the logarithm base b of x, those cancel and we get x. So using that idea, okay, when I have the logarithm base and my exponential base being the same thing, they can just cancel to be 11. Now for this other one, let's write 81 so that it is base 3. 81 is 3 to the 4th. So what I can say there, 
since the logarithm base and the exponential base are the same thing, we can simplify that to be 4. When I have a logarithm in my exponent of an exponential and the logarithm base and the exponential base are the same thing, those can cancel to be 10. Okay, our next example is going to use those properties. And we know we now know the fact that log base 5 of 2 is equal to some number. We need to find the log base 5 of 250. So what we need to do is we need to break 250 down into multiples of 5 because we know that log base 5 of 5 is equal to 1. So Break it down into um, multiples of 5 and multiples of 2. So there's something that I notice right away. 250 can be broken down into 25 times 10. That can be broken down even further into 5 times 5, because that's 25. 10 is 5 times 2. So really, this is log base 5 of 5 to the third times by 2. Now, because we're multiplying in here, I can break this down under addition. Okay, I can bring the 3 down in front, 3 times the log base 5 of 5 plus log base 5 of 2, 3 times 1, plus what the value they give me, so I have 3 plus 0 0.4307 is 3.4307. Okay, our next one. Again, we want to try and break this down into multiples of 6 and multiples of the base. So we're looking for the log base 5 of 216. Now, something that I notice right away, I can't break it down into base 5 because 5 doesn't go into 216 evenly. So I'm going to go and I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to look at how many times 6 goes into 216 and it goes in. 36 times. Some of you may have recognized that 216 is 6 to the third, but some of you may not have. So that's why I started with breaking it down into 6 times something. So I have 6 times 6 times 6, or the log base 5 of 6 to the third. Bring the 3 down in front times by the log base 5 of 6, so we have 3 times 1.1133, and that ends up equaling 3.3399. And you guys can't do these if I don't give you that value first, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, condensing logarithms, we need this when we're solving logarithm equations. So I need to write this as a single logarithm. Any coefficient needs to come up and become a power. That's the first thing you do. So I have log base 8 of x squared plus log base 8 of 5 minus log base 8 of y to the third. You can only combine these if we have the same base. And I wouldn't give you guys one where we don't have the same base. Under addition, combining these two terms into one logarithm, we get log base 8 of 5x squared, because I can multiply those. Now, under subtraction, we can combine them into one logarithm 
and we can say that that is division because I had my minus sign in between my two different logarithms. So this is writing that one logarithm as a single logarithm. Now expanding this, okay. First let's do our division piece. So I can break this down into log base five of two x to the sixth minus log base five of three y to the fourth. Now dealing with this first term, which is multiplication, log base five of two, can, you can expand that under addition. And then in parentheses, we have log base five of three times plus, I apologize, plus log base five of y to the fourth. Now what we can do is bring down any of the powers. So I'm gonna bring the six down and make it a coefficient, bring the four down and make it a coefficient. And notice how I have a negative sign and I put this second piece all in parentheses because both the three and the y to the fourth were both in the denominator. So what I can do here, I bring down the six and that's the most common things. People forget, students forget that they can bring down that six and make it a coefficient. And that is completely expanded minus log base five of three. Now remember to distribute this negative sign also to the second term. So this is what we get when we expand. Notice how anything that was dealing with the denominator of our original problem, those terms end up being negative. Okay. Um, there are your three lesson questions. The last one's multiple choice. And please make sure those are submitted on time.